remember, you can always listen to us during your private time. Hello, Kinky and King Cures folk out there. My name is Sir Inc. And tonight I have a, a good friend of mine who we're gonna go through these AKAs right now. She used to be called Slave Draconica. Now she's called Slave Valkyrie. She's definitely changing her name legally to Valkyrie, which has um, some spiritual significance to it. But without further ado, we're gonna have a conversation with her tonight. We're gonna talk about um, lifestyle support. Uh, we'll do a little bit of an update of what she's into uh, cause she's kind of moved and she has some good things going on, but we want to talk tonight specifically about lifestyle support, different groups on Facebook, and some of the things that, some tips that you guys can take with you so you know when you get into a group or you go to a function, you know what if it's a healthy situation or if it's not. Um, so without further ado, good evening. Well, how are you? I'm wonderful. You know how we do. We we both doing a lot. Oh yeah, a whole lot. 2022 has been everything we said it was going to be. Yes, I hit is. the ground running. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm gonna jump right into it. I'm I'm so thankful that you added me into the group, um, the lifestyle support group, and it's been really great. Uh, I've been really quiet in there. I am a, a, a moderator, but I've been quiet. Only because I got all my other stuff going on, doing a podcast, going live, trying to get used to that feel and expand Sir Inc., which has been going well. But I love sitting back and watching how the group is moderated behind the scenes in the chat. And for those that don't that do not know, I'm sure that everybody that's listening, if you're into the scene and you've been on social media, you've probably been invited to a group, you've been in a group. And then people get petty or people uh, post pictures that get flagged and people are arguing all this nonsense, right? So, you know, the children will be in the building, right? We, we're talking about the, the inmates running the asylum, right? And so this group in particular has like 16,000 people, right? Members. Yeah. A big group. Yeah. And it has plenty of moderators. And one of the things is they will not let anyone just post whatever they want. That is being looked at through all the moderators first. No one can just, just go ahead and prove that. They must look at that. And also the conversations are moderated to make sure that people don't get petty. We make sure that people don't argue. So I really like that. I really like that. Can you speak to more on this group because you added me to it? And I've only been in there for about a good, I don't know, six weeks now, but I really like it. Well, I've been uh, a writer and a moderator uh, for this group when it was a bunch of groups. Right. It used to be a separate group. And then it's, over the years, we've just kind of went down to two because of Facebook. But there's a whole lot y'all don't see. There's a whole back office. It's ran just like a business. Mm -hmm. We have rules we follow. We do all this stuff. And, you know, like when I put my threads up, I communicate with each and every person that says something back on my thread. Right. And we put a lot of time and effort in this. And the owner, she and the co-owner, they have worked so hard. They have studied and they have gotten the best people out there, the educated people like you, sir, you know, that, that are on team and on staff that we've got slaves, we've got dominants, we have littles, we have we have so many that's diverse. We have leather, we have regular, we have poly, we have mono. It, and it's, it's showing the evolution of where we were and where we are now safely. Right. It's not just one way or another. We don't sit and let people attack each other. We don't kink shame. Right. We shut that down. You know, they've got a whole system. It's it's the best educational place I've been. And I'm honored to be able to write on that. Right. Other than my work with certain, that is where my outlet has always been. It's, it's safe. It's like a home. Right. Yes, I do like it. And, uh, and that is one of the things you said, the back office, a lot, you know, some conversations going to back office to make sure that what we're seeing, uh, where are these people going with this commentary on this thread? Is this offensive? What do they really mean? You know, adding clarity, you know, definitely correcting people. So I, I love that. And, you know, look, self-admitted, like I've had a couple of groups. I've started groups on Facebook 
and through being flagged for photos or whatever content, um, I've gotten frustrated. Then you add people in, and then they just complain about what they don't, what they're not seeing, or what they thought the group was going to be about. But they're not adding anything at all. They're just there taking. And my whole thing is, if you don't have shit to offer, I don't know why you got shit to say. Um, just sit back, and if you don't like it, just let it go. But people are just bitchy like that. And you know me, I, I I'm like. I am a real end of the worldless type person. So like if I get frustrated, it's not that I would just end shit, but when I see it's petty and I'm really a one man wrecking crew on there, like I don't really have strong admin help. Like, you know, as we are talking about this group, I'll just end the group. Like, fuck it. Y'all petty. I'm done. I'll just go back mm-hmm. to my page where I don't have to. So, you know, running a group is, is very challenging. Um, it's not easy. I commend people who take it serious as a business like they do. Um, I admire that, um, but, and we need that in the community. What what would you say are some of the best things about the group? Um, I know we talk about education, but like, what are some of the best for a person that's not in a group, that's looking for like a group home where they can watch and, you know, and learn, what would you say are some of the key things for like a newbie? Well, first off, the stuff that you're reading has been researched and verified by not just one, but several. We, we make sure that it's coming from a healthy place and it's correct. Right. Two, we make sure that you're getting the correct information, you're getting it healthy, and you're getting supported. We also support each other. If someone's down, you can reach out and we can talk healthy-wise, right. not just from one side, but from both sides. And and you learn that that community because we've lost that so much in a lot of the other groups where all you're seeing is all sex 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 where in our group we talk about the struggles like in service or the struggle when you can't get your slave to do this or the struggles within poly or however that looks we talk about real life stuff it's not just you know what i mean and there's so much support within there that if you're struggling and you put a post that i'm struggling can you help me somebody's going to reach out They've got so many diverse people there that somebody there is going to grab. Somebody's going to identify. You, everybody can find their place there because, like I say, we've got them from all sides. Right. You know, we've got little furries, you name it. And somebody's going to be able to help you. And if you can't, we go that extra mile and we go find that information for you. We have links. We've done the research. We have stuff in, but like I say, back office where we've got suicide preventions and Remember when I was doing IPV, my links for IPV and, you know, and then you have writings that explain how people feel and it gives them a place that they can express themselves and a closed content that no one else sees. And it's very personal and you're safe. And that's the main thing within that group. What you're saying is safe and what you're seeing is safe. Right. I mean, these have been around for years right. and this group and you've got, you know, sure people come and go. Right. But it's a constant, and they protect each other. Right. And we we make sure safe. We make sure there's not thirst traps, and because you have that everywhere. And of course, it happens. But we don't. We publicly, if you want to PM somebody, you have to ask. Even as a moderator, I have to ask. Right. Can I PM? Right. I mean that no friends request without you know permission, and and respect the dynamics that people are in. No calling people baby girl when that ain't your baby girl. None of that. Right. We you have to hold a certain level, but it's everyone's treated equally, and that's what I think is amazing. They don't just pick one over the other, your side. Even if it's a moderator and somebody doesn't agree, they don't just boot that thread. We have to tread water and make sure it's safe and respectful. So one of the things you said um, that's very common in these groups, not not in this group, but it's very common when you have groups thirst trapping, right? People that are like, oh. My, 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 my dom left me. I've been lonely. Can you guys make me feel better? And people put pictures in there. Or, or a guy that's like, oh, um, I, I don't have a sub anymore. Can you ladies make me feel good? They don't have that kind of stuff in there. And what I do like is every now and again, we'll get a selfie train. And people are putting just like real quick, like how we all did that. And everybody's putting up a picture of themselves. No, and, it's not, and it's not thirst trapping. It's just a good way of people introducing themselves, showing who they are, and just light, you know, it's just it's just a light feeling. It's not like someone's getting on their half naked or showing a booty or 
some guy coming out the shower. It's, 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 it's not like that. It's people being really authentically themselves. And I, I like that. And it's not thirst trap. And the thirst trap stuff, I don't like groups like that. You know, um, I was put into a group and I got out of it. It was this Neo BDSM group. So it was... They're they're the opposite of the of the new guard, of the old guard. I'm sorry. So they're like the new guard, and there's a bunch of nuanced stuff they talk. And I was like, you know, I, I just, I just can't, I just, I just can't, I just can't. But I get it. Like there's there's something for everyone. So this new stuff is is it was different for me. I think it's a little petty. Um, and it's just new people trying to do things in a different way. Um, and I get that, you know, with, I get that with time, things will change. You start one way, it'll change. But I still think there are some core values from the old guard that need to stay all throughout. You know, we, we were just talking about that. And I, well, actually my, um, my ma'am is actually an, an admin. She's okay. a step above me, and uh, she, Mama Plus here, and uh, she, she's big on that. We have traditionalists, and we, we're leather, and and you know how I train, very old guard, but you know, had evolution not happened, I couldn't be leather. Right. If evolution hadn't happened, it, it, leather started out gay, right. and I don't have, I don't have that. But because of evolution, the proper way, we remember where we came from. We remember the values. We remember the ones that have fought to get here, even in BDSM by itself. Right. People have paved the way for us. Right. And that's why I educate because I don't want what I am lost with the ones that have started. Not that I'm against TNG because evolution is a thing. Right. But we, if you notice, the TNG is usually the long, younger younger crowds right. where our demographic is more we've been not all of us not older older but we've been around a while these are people that come into our groups that are serious about it right. and they're wanting to get information and find out about stuff and, and a place to feel safe but you know you have to remember the core values of where you came from because if not then you've got back like we've talked it's the fantasy and it's not the reality you know i'm a slave i'm an alpha slave but i don't walk around in chains all day long naked right. i for real don't i'm in clothes and i make Right. bottle and you know you it, that's the reality and so we have a lot of that that people can bounce back and forth we have you know like you know I'm a business owner just like yourself I'm a professional so we have that camaraderie of how to balance the life and the lifestyle right. and how that kind of you know it's it's important to have that to, to guide someone through it safely sanely and educate yourself and get the fantasy out of it and the reality right. the reality of you know, chicken puffs at two o'clock in the morning because master wants it or whatever that looks like. But the reality is at the end of the day, you're still people and it's real. Right. And and that takes fantasy out. And that group is amazing for it. I only align myself with the best pages to write with and the groups because that's my integrity and my character. Like I say, I've written for you for years. You are the best. Right. I will be in the line with you. So is this group. I would suggest it for anyone. I've always come back home, even when I had my own crap going. Right. I've always come back home. And they all have integrity. They all stand up for each other. And that is what BDSM is about. Right. It's 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 not all the other new stuff. So we have to find an indifference of how do we balance everyone and make everyone feel equal. Right. And that's what they they do it effectively. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's whew, integrity is so big. Integrity is so big, so big, so big. Um, integrity is huge. And, and I don't think, and I, and I think a lot of times people create things like groups and, and maybe have functions. And I think their heart, their, their intentions were in the right place in the beginning. But I think ego and and discipline and having rules is very important when you're dealing with a group of people. And I just don't, th and I, I don't think people, I think people go into like, mm, I'm gonna create a group, you know, or I'm gonna have a get together or whatever. 
but they really don't think it all the way through. Like, I need to have rules. I need to make sure, because, not you know, people are, everyone's different. You know, uh, some people are conservative. Some people are very, very wild and open, and you need to have rules for for everybody to govern. Absolutely. And, and well, my ma'am, she's a coordinator, and the amount of stuff that goes into an event and the rules and the integrity level and all the safety and all the vetting and all this other stuff that goes along with it, people don't see that. Mm-hmm. It, it You're always going to have to have some kind of structure, which I laugh because BDSM one-on-one structure, structure, structure. Right. It, it has to be structured. There has to be rules. There has to be uh, to be held accountable. Right. To be, you know, you don't have that sounding board. Just someone that's going to hold me accountable or you accountable, whoever, if we do do something that might not be ethical and we don't see it that way. Heck, I posted a picture the other day and had my own t- picture flag. They were like, hey, that's showing nudity. And I'm like, that's a shadow. They were like, nope, that's nudity. I said, okay. Right. And I, I didn't even see it, but thank God somebody else did. Right. Yeah, I mean... You know, it's so crucial. So again, that's why I love, you know, this group in particular because it has strong moderators, it has, it's, it's, it's very well thought out. And um, I appreciate being a part. Now, you mentioned your ma'am. Now, what is going on? Let's get a brief update of what's going on with you because now you're, you've moved to, to my state Right, you moved to my state. What's going on? What's the update with you, darling? New name, new state, or well, change the name coming? New state. What we doing? Well, behind the scenes for about a year, I've been looking at a leather house. It's the House of Kinky Misfits. It is a female-led, dual dynamic leather house. It is poly. And it is amazing. They're educational. They support mental health. You know, we, we've got puppies and this and that. And it's a family. And I kept it under wraps and I tried something else out. Remember, I even put on the whole D cap. Right. That wasn't for me. I'm like, I ain't doing that. I don't want to be a ma'am. Thank you. I'm good at it, but I don't want it. Right. But within that realm, um, my dynamic had ended right after our last podcast. He came out of the blue and decided it wasn't for him. And that's okay. Okay. And uh, my ma'am saw my name change to back to Dracarnica in uh, under the house of Gron, which was my papa's house. Okay. And she reached out. And she's like, are you safe? And I was like, yep. She goes, are you in a leather house safe? And I said, no. And she goes, are we going to dance anymore? Are you coming home? She come and got me. Um, I was right at the first of the year. And I got home. We went over the rules with everybody because we have house rules. And we signed the contract every year to abide by all these rules what we have to do and the hierarchy and everything and uh did that meshed with my siblings you know got to know each other and four days later they offered me the captain's position which is my mama's uh, head of the house her husband and my master chief is co-head you know he's a secondary in the command and then they have what they call the captain which is the lead alpha okay. and um, i took that position it, it's a total up at the top leadership that's over all the siblings. I have a, two betas and another alpha. Um, and it, you know, just getting everybody structured and learning leather a little bit more. And, and it's amazing, but it's an educational house. She is a founder or she is the leader of Mass in Oil City. Mm-hmm. Um, she is an event coordinator. She's done PEP. She's done other ones. She is big on education. And I couldn't be any happier. I have thrived like you would not believe. This is home. And I know y'all heard me say it before, but this is home. I will do my final caller in June. And I'm super excited. This is where I needed to be all along. This is who I am. And they're super supportive. We we're a family. I mean, you should see it when we sit around and we're all in a service puddle on the floor, everybody fighting for feet and watching Vikings or whatever, or getting up and serving and making everything okay for the day. Right, right. And, you know, it works like a gear. And this is leather done right. right. And I, I'm happy. You know, they we discussed my name. It's perfect. And I finally have 100% without the craziness arrived. 
the smoke is gone. The I've worked through traumas. I'm I'm doing what I need to do to be me, and I'm here now, and I'm happy. I won't be going anywhere. I will continue to educate. I'm coming to see you since we're in the same state, Dagummit. All right. Okay. That's what I'm talking about. Good, 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 good. I'm happy for you. Um. Wow. You know, again, the, how the journey starts. You know, it'll take you to a lot of different places. And you really don't know who's who until you are in some shit, you know. And then you get the, you, you know, and time will tell. That's why I always... People think I'm bugging when I say I need at least two years to really know somebody, you know, because you can't hide, you can't, people can't hide themselves that good. Like I'm watching, I'm not watching, but I'm just observing. And, you know, time will give up people's intentions, you know, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. You know, it's, it's sad, but that's where we are. And you know, it's funny. Um, so I put something up on my wall about, and I did a I did a live about this. The person posted in in the group about some dom saying like, "What level of submissive was she?" Oh my god! And that and that, and that is one of those ridiculous things you hear. That's like, what do you mean? What level of like what? What level of submissive? is she i thought that was definitely a red flag so what do you think about stuff like that like when you see stuff like that that's like i mean at least that that submissive was like she knew that was wrong you know she knew well, actually that whole thing got brought to me and they were like what do you think and i was just like you know me i said what right. hold up level right. of submissive that is characteristics of submission Right. That is a characteristic. It is not a level. Right. So we level up. Me and my man laughed. She said, I leveled all the way up into becoming a mistress. No, no. She just like stopped. Because right. she actually, my, she was a slave, a Kajira okay. for years. Okay. So she like leveled up. I said, I don't want to level up. Let me out. Right. That is characteristics. This is the stuff that I don't like. Right. It, why do you have to define stuff? Like we talked about before, back before we had DDLG. We have pet play, kid and play. That was kind of the cute little mischievous side. Before we had brats, we had Sam's. Right. <laughs> you know, they they keep tweaking things. Why why are you going to say there's a level of submission? So what level dominant are you? Because we all know you've got gent, we've got sir, we've got dominant, and right. then we have master. Right. But is there, because you're a sadist, does that make you that, that's the level you're on? So are you saying if you are a pleasure dom or more of a sensual dom, that makes you less of a dominant than the next person? Right. No, just because somebody's not a masochist doesn't make them not as submissive. It just means they don't want to be hit. That's not their kink. Right. That doesn't mean they're any different. Just like slavery and submission, two different things. Doesn't mean one outweighs the other. There's no different level of surrender or submission. It's just different flavors. Right. So it's characteristics. I thought it was retarded. I was go ahead and post and let's see what happens. And they did, right. and it was funny. Right. But no. <laughs> you know, people are so. I don't know. It's and and it's the, you know, it's the gift and the curse of social media. It brings people together, but in a uh, lifestyle like this, it brings a level of danger and. In this lifestyle, it's you know the stuff that we do isn't just like holy safe. Like we're doing some really risky stuff sometimes, but the people don't need to be risky. You know that's right. The acts are risky, but with the right person, the 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 level of risk is lessened. However, when you have some jerk who doesn't know what they're doing and they're just looking for someone to try shit on, that's dangerous and. A lot of people really just want online play. They really don't want to meet people and really have a meaningful relationship or meaningful interaction. They just want to play around, you know, in my opinion. And I've heard a more submissive say um, in situations where they were with a dime that they might have met that wasn't real, that the guys really didn't know what they were doing. So that's better than some a few of the horror stories that I've heard. 
So not all the time. I don't know if we talk about fake doms and how bad it is. Sometimes people, fake doms, just don't know what they're doing. So you're really not so much in harm's way because they don't really know what they're doing. And they're just really good, nice guys who really just want, they're, just, they're in it to meet a woman that's freaky. Like some women are regular girls that are in it to find a guy who might be more of a man's man. And a lot of more times than not, I've heard stories just like, the guy didn't really know what he was doing. He's being, you know, really kind of not as aggressive or you could tell he was a novice opposed to the horror stories. And I've heard horror stories, but those are more the aggressive asshole types. You know them. Well, you know, you have to educate yourself. And for me, even when I would go to a dungeon, you right. know, I like to vet the dungeon as well because there's some dungeons that are crazy out there. Right. But when people come up, say this come up to me because I'm a thicker girl, so that's a sadist dream, a lot of canvas, and they want to, you know, can I have a, you know, scene with you? Right. Not to like a scene with somebody else. You want to fire flog me, but you've never lifted a flyer, a flogger. No, you're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Right. You know, you. Have, so I have respect for the ones that are new newbies that come into our group, and they're getting the education, and they're asking, they're wanting to learn the right way, they're wanting to navigate the right way. Right. Just like the submissive when they come out, I, I, I actually mentor a couple, and they want to navigate it the right way. They want to know, well, how do I know? Mm -hmm. They want to know who I want to serve right now, and I'm so excited, and I'm going to jump right into it. You know I've done it, mm -hmm. and it's frenzy, and you need to back off and find out what you really need and figure out what it is that you like. Mm -hmm. It's trial and error. Do it safely. Right. Well, if you educate yourself, with good resources, good resources. Mm -hmm. If you go to classes and classes and you take those online classes, you know, there's everybody's online these days. We have a, a, a book club every Sunday. I sent you a link to it that mm -hmm. we do a book and we discuss that together as a group. You're educating yourself. Yes. And we discuss how to make this feel it's important. Mm -hmm. It's important to get yourself in line with that, to educate yourself safely. Right. Even the older ones to learn the new ways. It's important. Right. Because there's a lot I don't know. Right. And you know, I, I think a lot of people wait till they find someone to figure all the other steps out instead of educating themselves. Like I tell I tell people all the time, like, listen, that story of O is a really great story. It is a really great story of uh of a journey of adventure of you know um a slave um a lot but that's not necessarily the reality for most people and it's okay to start there like be introduced to the story of O, or be introduced to 50 shades of gray but that's someone else's thoughts and imagination and reality that's not necessarily your reality oh I don't know, not many of these new submissives can reach the level of, oh, that takes, I mean, that's an aggressive, you know, that's an aggressive story. It's very erotic and it's very, um, I get it. I get it. It make your panties wet. But, I mean, your ass are hurt too. And some other things are hurt too. If you just think you're going to jump in and be, oh, like, you don't, you just don't become, oh. In the time that you took, it took you to read the fucking book and stories. Well, you know, I trained in a Victorian house like, oh, oh really? that's how I got my training. Oh, nice. So when it came out, you know, and I, I mean, and I got to get in subtitles. I cried. I right. cried because I'm like, that's my journey. Right. However, that's not for everybody. That's not for everybody. Right. And, and I don't regret it. <laughs> I grand glory in a year. That's when I had my whole head shaved. Right. That made me mad. Right. And I slept outside. That wasn't for me neither. Uh, but, you know, heck no. But, you know, there was beauty within all of it. Right. But you cannot watch a movie and then decide, oh, this is it. Just like I have people, and I'll talk about it again this time, that wake up and tell me, I woke up a slave today at 18. You right. did, huh? Hmm. You know what that means? You know what that means. And I'm not saying it's any different, but you need to educate yourself before you Say you want to give up that no. Right. You've got to align yourself. I vetted with this house a year, mm -hmm. a year behind the scenes. I talked to other people 
for a year. I watched how they interacted with their people and how often people went in and out of their house. Right. You know what I mean? I watched the post. I watched babies being born. I watched the hard times. I watched it. Right. And they always was ethical. You can't just jump if you're doing a lifetime thing. Right. Just like people, the 50 shades. They don't look at it for what it really is. There's metaphors all in that. Mm-hmm. It's just a red, red. Well, nine times out of 10 in a poly house, you might see one of your slaves once. There's 14 of our family. Right. We have seven. Slaves. You ain't going to see somebody every day. When are you going to have time for you? Right. No doubt. You, it's not the reality. That's, you know, it's it. So they want that. But do you? Because if that's what you want, you're not going to get that. Right. It's not not real. But, you know, kinky on the weekend, weekend warriors do you, but be safe. Be safe. Right. You know, fire flogging and fire cupping and, you know, knife play, all that. That has to be somebody that's experienced and not just a year. Right. You've got to know where to cut and when to cut and how to cut or whatever. You've got to know where to put a rope when you're doing a, a, a bonding. Right. You've got to know. That comes from education mm-hmm. and experience. Mm-hmm. Experience. Yes, you have to know where to put rope. You don't want rope to be uh, to be pressed against certain arteries, cutting the circulation off this. And it's funny because again, you you can watch very experienced people, and they're doing this, you know, fast and they're moving. And you're not understanding that they're just not tying someone up and using fancy knots. Like they're they're doing it in a certain way. When you see them moving it around and tugging on it to make sure that it's right. They're making sure that it's not on arteries. Like you have to really study. And that's the thing. Like we had talked, and you were saying, uh, you know, I always call myself a sir. And he was like, yo, but you're a master. Like you you've mastered yourself. You've mastered certain things. And the things that I'm not mastering, in life rope play. I like I'm not mastering in rope. I know how to do some very simple ties of wrist and ankles, wrist to the and you know wrist to the ankles, but I'm not experienced enough to do rigging, because now when you go do rigging, that is a whole even when you're doing regular ties, but when you're doing rigging, especially when people weight will be used to and be suspended, you want to make sure that that rope is not on a major artery. You want to make sure that you're not cutting people's circulation off. That is crucial, and I and and and. People are just lazy. They look like we all like YouTube University. We want to look at stuff and then just go do shit. No, you really got to study. You really got to put some work in. If you're not willing to do the work, don't get into this lifestyle at all because it takes work. If you're not willing to do the work, it shows the people who are experienced. Mm -hmm. It does. Because I'll my way. I've been in this over 30 years now. I don't like to talk about that like too much because, you know, I started young. But... (laughs) I, when when I get somebody that comes out and they're saying ba 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 and I'm thinking what? Mm-hmm. And I laugh now. I'm like, do you know who I am? And I'm not meaning to be ugly, right. but do you realize that you know my mentor has been a slave for 57 years, right. and uh, huh? you know, and she gets me, right? And uh, she, you know, so we've got the time in. We're veterans. You are too, right. and we have seen the dumb stuff. Dumb- and you and I both. The what is that? that? What is that? <laughs> right. But you know, I, I'm not gonna yuck somebody's yum. That's what they say around here. I'm not gonna kink shame. Right. But if you're doing something dangerous like breath play, everybody's like, "Well, you've been abused." I've had a trach. Um, why do you still like breath play? Because there's a difference between a tracheal choke and a blood choke. Right. Well, how do you need to come back? Well, because that person is going to be affluent in breath play. Right. They're going to know I'm going to see them perform it before they perform it on me. Right. But I, mm-hmm. Oh, well, they're saying it's in needle play. My mom is into needle play. And it's beautiful. But bet I'm going to have to watch her put that needle somewhere to know that I can handle it. I trust her. Right. But you do that. You you watch that person. You right. you watch their mannerisms. You see, I got to see at the car, a cathartic scene she performed on my little sister. Mm-hmm. And it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen. I felt like I was invading, but to be able to see her interact and then to watch that submissives or that, that bottoms face to the interaction and the energy play, because a lot of people don't realize in this lifestyle, there's energy exchanged. 
100%. Whether it's the industry or, I mean, I'm big into energy play, yes. you know, and that's what it's about for me is that exchange. And if you don't pay attention and you don't educate yourself, you're going to get hurt. And then you're going to, you're going to be going to the daggum hospital with a PVC pipe popped out of somewhere else you didn't know about. And how do you explain that? Right. You know, cause you educate yourself. And it's called energy exchange also for a dominant. And I'm speaking to the guys that are, to the guys and the ladies that are dominants. It's called reading the temperature of the room. Sometimes we, we do do safe words and safe gestures, but sometimes you as the dominant have to check the temperature of the room. You have to know if this, if you're pouring it on this person and on your submissive or your subject at the moment and they're taking it and you're like, mm, that she's saying she can take it or he's saying he can take it, but I can tell it's excruciating pain. They may not want to disappoint you by saying, don't go, no, don't keep going, right? So they're, they're pushing themselves. They may be pushing themselves too far. You have to peep the temperature of the room and say, you know what? This ain't the night for it. You know, um, I had a submissive. Right. We were playing and she was like, yo, she was just so, she was chilly. And I'm like, well, damn, the, the heat in the room was, the temperature of the room was good as far as the heat level was good. But she was very sensitive and had goosebumps. And so I was like, okay, um, we didn't play long at all. I took her off and then we was just chilling and um, come to find out she was, um, had some kind of viral infection. Didn't really know that, you know, um, cause she didn't have any like cold symptoms, you know what I mean? But she had like some 24 hour viral uh, bug, you know, that was making, she, mm -hmm. that night she sweated the, the bed up that night. So it, it was just a situation where she was going through something, but me, I'm reading the temperature of her. I'm like, damn, she's cold. Like it's warm in here. She's got goop bumps. She's acting like she's cold. I might, you know, we might need to table this for tonight. Something's not right. This is not like her to be like this. And she's extra sensitive to things that levels that, okay, this is where we start. And she's very sensitive to that. So I'm like, uh, something might be a little off. So I, you know, so we shut the scene down. Right. And then come to find out the next day she woke up, she sweated that night. She's like, Yo, I'm gonna go to the doctor. She went to the doctor and found out she has some kind of viral and for 24 hour viral something, you know, and but she didn't have any cold light symptoms in the way of, um, you know, mucus and all that and, you know, flu like symptoms. So it is what it is. But you have to be able to read the temperature of the room, everybody like this is so important. It's an energy exchange. And I could have just kept going like, well, we're going to just do what we normally do. I'm going to keep going. Nah, something ain't right. And I don't know if I had kept going, if if I put her body in some kind of shock. I don't know. Because we, I'm, I'm, I was planning to do wax play. So if she's already got the chills, what does that do if I hit her with hot wax? And then I always use right. wax. And then I may use cold water at the same time. So what does that do for a person that's already going through something internally? That they don't even know, but they just know they don't feel the same. They know that they're more sensitive, and they know that they feel in chilly. But the heat is mm -hmm. up, so you know. So I've I read that our energy is like we're we're not on the same page tonight. Something's up, and I'm just going to table it. And that's what's important is to be able to do that. Right. My ma'am will walk in a room and go, "What's with the face?" Right, and I'm like, "What?" And she can tell. She can just tell if something's like not off with me. Right. Master just say, what's going on with you, girl? Nine times out of ten, I'm large and in charge, but it'll be a face. Come here and talk to me. Right. What's going on? Right. And I may not even realize it, but to be able to take that time to learn your person, to learn your people. I, I, like I say, with my siblings, they're all different, so I have to interact with them a little differently. Mm -hmm. I will talk to one okay, and one another. Mm -hmm. We all have different levels. And we have to figure out how that is. And if you learn your person, you're going to learn that body language. That's what I love about dominance is y'all concentrate on learning us, but it's on the flip side, just like anticipatory service, a service on each side. We anticipate your look, your catch, your what's up. We can tell in a text what's going on. You know, um, it, it it's about paying attention and to be present 
to be absolutely present in whatever play, scene, dynamic, whatever you are doing in BDSM. You have got to be conscious and sanely sober and present. You right. can't be all up in the headspace because once you get in the headspace, you've got to trust that person to go, okay, she's not going to tap out because she can't. She's right. not feeling it anymore. But tomorrow she's going to. Right. So I'm going to back off. Or if I can tell my my top is floating up in the top space, I'm going to call it. Right. I'm going to run my finger up because I know they're not going to realize where they're at. Right. And we need to be sane and careful. Right. That's why we, we play, play. We have scenes. There's always another dominant here, another sadist that watches. There's always someone watching our scenes right. so that you have that at accountability partner that can someone right. that can call the scene right they can say okay this is not too far right or you know you say you're good to go that they check in and look at the other person are you okay right you know make sure we're still and that's safe and that makes it so much better right so much better for your release for the energy being exchanged and for the whole the whole scene the whole the whole everything right you you've done it i think that's so important Right. so important yes it is yes it is yeah it's very important and i mean it's 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 so much right because the lifestyle can be so fun it can be so fun but there's a lot of detail to it to get to the fun you know yes if you've experienced some kink in your life where you've had sex with a partner you use handcuffs that's fine you know, that's that's the fun stuff. You know, that's the that's the that's kink. But when we talk when we talk about them deeper levels of kink, when we talk about those say like handcuffs is a little bit of trust. You gotta have some trust in a person to let them handcuff you. I'm gonna give you that. But you have to have a whole lot of trust to do a lot of this other stuff that we're talking about. And Absolutely. and when you put trust in someone, you have to put trust in them that they've done some some homework and some detail work to know what they're doing in the moment. Because a, a young lady said, well, what if the top gets, what if the, the dime gets lost in a session? I said, a dime should never get lost in a session. The dominant has to always be present of what they're doing. Now, if a dominant is not one, if a dominant is like one of those, if it's, if, if the dominant is a straight aggressive type, then yes, you're going to need a safe word. You're going to need a safe gesture to, 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 to let them know like, yo, okay, okay. You know, uh, but doms that are not so aggressive, they're, they're always being present of what level they're at and what level they're taking you to. You know, they're going to ask you, you know, you know, if you're at level five, they're going to be like, we're going up to six. We're going up to seven. Right. They're not just. And always check. Yeah, they're, they're going to check in with you. They're not going to take you from five to seven without, you know, without making some kind of acknowledgement that you're about to go a little bit further. You know, so. You're right. About, my, and, and sometimes my, it's. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, my saying, mom and I did fire cupping scene mm -hmm. and I'd never done it mm -hmm. and that, that's fire cupping. and we set it all up and she, but she explained to me every little step that she was doing I'm doing this mm -hmm. are you good mm -hmm. how does this feel and then she did the the, the fire blanket mm -hmm. and she explained to me when it gets too hot for you let me know I did not know that she had legit set a tile on fire on my back right didn't know that but she was checking in constantly. Well, heck, the, the whole towel almost burned up. I mean, not, you know, it, it's the fumes that burn off. Right, 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 right. But before it was getting hot, it was the most amazing thing. But I was safe within it because each step, this is what I'm doing. When we had our first scene, you know I'm a heavy masochist. She doesn't know I'm a heavy masochist. So we started out very light. And we tried out this, this, and this. Right. And we tried this out. And, and I kind of giggled and I was like, I know I can take more, right? She's like, yeah, but not today. You're not because right. I need to learn your body. I need to learn your rhythm and your breathing. I need to learn that movement of your foot because you liked it because right. I was trained to be silent and not move when I'm seen. Right. Right. I'm learning, but you know, she, then that's the conscious effort that she lays out her implements and she lets me touch them. 
and she explains to me what this does and what this is and why this does this and and it's important all that's important we discuss the music that's played the energy that's going to be in the room all of that right and and when you do that it's educating yourself right. i know it's not spontaneous and oh my god i'm on the wall in chains right but if it, you learn that right it will always be that way she will always explain things to me she will always check in and see if i'm okay there will always be that other person right that says okay she's saying she's okay but she's really not looking okay right you know or, or maybe you know she's gotten off into some headspace of her own and we need to pull back and somebody knows her face and how it changes right. she may not realize she's doing it, but somebody else does right because we do play that hard we do we extensively do cathartic scenes and we help people through the ick and the dirt and they're saying these things and you're thinking they're being ugly and they're not it's therapeutic right. so like i said my house is very educational there's a reason for everything that we do right. and it's to make you better to build you into something better than you were before even if even if someone decides to leave the house or when they're training because they have students right they their plan here is to always have you leave better than you got here right. and i feel like that should be an end right. that you leave that dynamic cleanly right. and better than you were before right. regardless of why it happened Right. And that that's education. That's that's responsibility in the lifestyle, which we don't have. A lot of people want to just fly on you know, knee jerk reaction. Right. They met her at the club. Let's tie her up. Or she's met him at the club. Let's go tie him up. Right. That's not safe. Right. Because you're messing with people's too. Right. 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 Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. So do you have any final thoughts? I mean, we're going to keep doing these. We're going to do these once a month at least. Right. So. Let's um do you have any final words for them for my audience for our audience? Well, um keep educating yourself, keep growing, right. keep aging uh -huh. and successfully and keep loving each other. And if I can say anything, I can't believe I'm saying it, right. but if I can say it, let love in right. and know you're enough on the side of the slash. Wonderful. And exchange that power. Out. Right, and for all for and for everyone that's listening, if you're interested in the lifestyle group, please uh, inbox me, DM me anywhere uh, on any platform. And if you ever and you will see Slave Valkyrie on my page, just send her a message. I'm sure it's okay to send her a message asking her about the group because more than likely we will probably have to be a friend if we can't send you a link and connect you to the group and then we can unfriends after that whatever the case may be but um you guys know where to find me sir i and q on instagram facebook twitter uh you can check out the website sir um check out youtube check out my youtube channel y'all you know i'm just i'm getting it popping everywhere doing live videos doing more content um and if you guys have any subject that you would wish for me to expand on, uh, even with one of my guests, former guests, or with my friend, Vakari here, just please let us know. And we will um, do some commentary on that and put it up. And I want to thank you again for being here with me tonight. And uh, I'm going to post this up and get that link to you. And we will um, do this again next month, same time. The one thing though, okay. we are fixing to be doing our lives for HKM and we are fixing, I got a TikTok up, Slave Valkyrie. We're doing lives for, I mean, like videos for that, yeah. education stuff, you can do a TikTok too. I'm still around, I'm just Slave Valkyrie now. I promise you I'm still here people, keeping it real, okay? You can find me everywhere, I still got Draconica up for Instagram and I still got Draconica's chains up on the website. I haven't changed that, but I'm still here, y'all keep it popping. That's what we need. Until next time. That was quite an experience, wasn't it? Tune in again for a fresh release of Sir Inc.'s The Experience Podcast.